What is up, guys? Welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast. If you're watching this on Monday, you're one of our YouTube members or Patreon supporters. And if you're not, all good. Just coming out a different day. Uh, today, the Chargers are interviewing Jim Harbaugh for their head coaching spot. They're clearing out everything, rolling out the red carpet. It's going to be Jim Harbaugh entering the building today. So let's find him some potential coordinators. But I'm just looking at assistant coaches around the league. The best ones, position coaches, run game coordinators, secondary coaches, etc. Those guys that are the best of the best and known for great development of players from all different spots across many years around the NFL. These are the guys we should be talking about as future coordinators for the Chargers, whoever their coach is, except Dan Quinn, because that was terrible. All right. So let's get into it. This one is nerdy. I got to tell you guys, like if you're here and you're listening to this one, you're watching this one, it's a bit nerdy. Assistant coaches, <laughs> we're, this is where we're at, guys. If you're still here, consider yourself kind of a football nerd. So let's start with the offense. And I set this up before the games, and I feel much better after them as well. I have Jason Vrabel, the Green Bay wide receivers and pass game coordinator. I have Daryl Bevel, the Miami quarterbacks coach and pass game coordinator. And then Tanner Engstrand, the Detroit Lions pass game coordinator. Let's start with Tanner Engstrand, who I found out way too late. Worked with Jim Harbaugh, both at the University of San Diego and at Michigan. And he's currently the Detroit Lions pass game coordinator. I like the Detroit Lions pass game attack, of course, very much so. Yes, that's through Ben Johnson. But hey, could do worse than the pass game coordinator in Tanner Engstrand as your future offensive coordinator, especially when you, Jim Harbaugh, let's say, is so, you're someone that works with the trenches and, and the run games. You've got that part figured out. Engstrand comes in as your offensive coordinator, pass game designer, bringing some Ben Johnson with him while you bring the toughest and grit in the trenches in the run game. Ooh. All right, Daryl Bevel. I don't know that he's the most electric option for Chargers fans, but I do believe that should the Chargers go out and get a first-time head coach, let's say Ben Johnson, Daryl Bevel would be a good option because he's been there, he's done that, he's been an offensive coordinator. When he was an offensive coordinator in Seattle, as far as back as EPA per play goes, they were fourth in EPA per play when he was there. He's been an interim head coach twice. I don't know how many coaches do that, but he's been an interim head coach twice. So he's been there, done that, and I think that would really help out a few first-time head coach, really any head coach, but certainly a first-time head coach. Jason Vrabel, Green Bay head coach, or bleh, Green Bay wide receivers and pass game coordinator. That was pretty <laughs> against the Cowboys. The, the Packers could not do anything wrong against the Cowboys in that game. And what Vrabel's been able to do with the development of these wide receivers, whether it's Wicks, whether it's Reed, whether it's Dubs, whether it's, I guess he's not a part of the tight ends, but whether it's Watson, and then working with the pass game with those young tight ends and with those receivers to drop the most points against Dallas in, I believe it was their postseason history. I think some of the most points ever in postseason history against a team playing in their home stadium where they've been dominant all year where Jordan Love, those receivers, those tight ends to go out and do that against Dan Quinn and the Cowboys is impressive. So these three guys, absolutely impressive for sure. All right, some of the trench guys up next. We have Chris Forrester, the San Francisco run game coordinator, offensive line coach. Stump Mitchell, the Browns running backs coach and run game coordinator. And then, of course, the, the standard in the league, Jeff Statland, Philadelphia offensive line coach. Chris Forrester, let's start with the obvious thing that I probably should mention, which is that he did take a leave of absence, but then returned to the 49ers for, I believe, videoed cocaine usage. So obviously not exactly the the number one option there in terms of background but he is currently working with the 49ers so they've he was hopefully mended his ways and is not doing that anymore regardless what he does on the field in terms of the coordination of the running game and the offensive line play is outstanding it's one of the best running games in the league it has been certainly attribute that to shanahan but then a lot of these position coaches do have good you know, head coaches or coordinators working above them. So Chris Forrester, I got to mention him. Stunt Mitchell, the running backs for Cleveland, especially with, with Nick Chubb. At the point, the Chargers, I believe, either played the Browns last year or by the end of the season. I can't remember. But I believe is at the point the Chargers played the Browns last year, the Browns rushing attack had a higher EPA per play than Patrick Mahomes throwing the football. 
that's how good that run game was last year when Nick Chubb was healthy and they were healthy and the line was healthy. They were outstanding. And it's impressive that they've been able to really maintain that while the quarterback situation has not been great. So even though your quarterback situation has been bad to a carousel, to a dumpster fire, to somehow Joe Flacco, despite all that, the run game has still been working and the running backs have been good. Jerome Ford has obviously developed. Nick Chubb is one of the best, if not the best running back in the league. Unfortunately, he got hurt. And then Jeff Stoutland, don't think he's going to be leaving, but have to mention him because he's Jeff Stoutland. And the Philadelphia offensive line has been great for a very long time. There are few premium coaches in the league who are just the best at their job regardless. Ryan Fitkin actually I think is one of those guys. Jeff Stoutland is certainly another. All right, so if you want to get two wide receivers and tight ends, Eric Yarber, the Rams wide receiver coach. We have Lunda Wells, the Dallas tight ends coach. And then Troy Walters, the Cincinnati Bengals wide receivers coach. We'll start with Walters because the other two had their games already in the postseason. Um, Walters, the Bengals did not make it, not because of the wide receivers. He's been their assistant wide receivers coach and wide receivers coach since 2020. And they work with Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Andre Yoshivas. And I randomly included Yoshivas there because the guy has, I think, about 200 yards and four touchdowns this past year as a late day three pick, I believe, uh, and a rookie. And I just think that if you can work with guys from all different backgrounds, you know, first round pick in Jamar Chase to Yoshivas picked much later, being able to work with those guys is, is so key. And that Bengals attack consistently works through very, very good wide receivers. Um, Higgins, not the best year because it's marred by injury, but he's going to go out and get a good contract. Uh, Lunda Wells, the Dallas tight ends coach, Jake Ferguson. When I mentioned earlier in the year, when I was talking about Derwin James covering Jake Ferguson, how he shut down Jake Ferguson, you know, everyone's like, oh, Jake Ferguson. But no, Jake Ferguson was a focal point of the Cowboys attack. And I think yesterday he had like 11, 12 catches, 100 something yards. And I believe a touchdown and I think a two point conversion in that game. He's had a very productive season, but it's impressive that London Wells has taken not just great talent, but like day three talent, Dalton Schultz, Jake Ferguson. These guys are not first round, second round, third round picks. Schultz, I believe, was fourth. Ferguson, I believe, was fifth. And they've taken those each of those guys and turned them into legit starting tight ends. And the, if you look at Wells, when he joined the Cowboys, the first two years Schultz was there uh, before Wells, I think he had 100, 200 maybe receiving yards. And after Wells got there, he had you know his big three seasons that got him into free agency. So excellent work there, of course. And then Eric Yarber, I think that working with McVeigh obviously helps and doing so since 2017 definitely helps. Some of the receivers have been better. Some start strong. Some take longer, like a 2-2 Atwell. But that wide receiver room is pretty strong. And nowhere is that more apparent now than with Puka Nakua. It's not just developing Cooper Cup. It's also Puka Nakua and getting those guys to be outstanding receivers and getting, getting Nakua to be, what do you have, 182 yards in the wild card loss? Certainly wasn't because of him. Great catches. Uh, obviously, if you looked at the video of them identifying Nakua and talking about him, it was very much so when McVay had a plan for him, of course. But you got to execute that plan, and Yarbrough has certainly done that with Nakua and, of course, beforehand with Cooper Cup. All righty, 10 minutes in or something like that. Let's go to defense. All right, so defensive line, Eric Henderson for the Rams, Chris Kosarek for the 49ers, and Jacques Césaire for the Houston Texans. Let's start with let's start with Césaire, former Charger, of course. And if you watch that game against the Browns, I think it's the perfect time to talk about him because of the way they dominated the Cleveland Browns in that game. He's been a great, the defensive line play has been strong where he's gone previously with the Bills and now with the Texans. Just an outstanding defensive line, very strong trenches. He's been there and done that in the NFL. Now he's doing it as a coach. Those units are very strong. I do think he should be someone's defensive coordinator very soon um, if he wants to be. Chris Kosarek, that's probably the probably like the opposite of Jeff Stoutland in terms of you know offensive line versus defensive line. If offensive line is Stoutland, Chris Kosarek seems to be that guy for defensive line. Just elite with stars, with guys you've traded for, resurrecting careers, guys that are depth. For the most part, all those guys just do well. They develop well. They play well. If they're first-round picks like Bosa, they reach their potential. If they're later picks, they develop, that sort of thing. 
And same-ish kind of thing for Henderson, the Rams defensive line coach and run game coordinator. Maybe wasn't the best game against the Lions in that first half. Definitely got better in the second half. But what's been so impressive is the constant churn through different defensive linemen and how good that defensive line tends to be year in and year out. And this last year with, with Byron Young, with Kobe Turner and those guys, I mean, you have some legit development from guys who are not your first round picks who developed into very, very good, if not great players who are going to be your nucleus for years to come. So yes, you have Aaron Donald, of course, but able to just get those rookies and instantly turn them into very good players is a testament to how good of a coach Henderson is. And he, I can't remember the name of the award, but Jay Rogers won the defensive line coach of the year award. I think the year before Henderson won or a year after. So Henderson has won it as well. No surprise. Great defensive line coach. More defensive line, baby. Let's talk about it. And I, I love these guys as well. Terrell Williams, the Tennessee Titans assistant head coach slash defensive line coach. Brandon Jordan, uh, Seattle's pass rush specialist. And then Anthony Weaver, Baltimore's associate head coach and defensive line coach. Weaver is the guy actually getting some head coach buzz. Do I think it materializes into a head coaching job? Not necessarily, but he is getting some head coach buzz. That Baltimore front is, of course, awesome. He's a former NFL player. Great option there. Could legitimately be the Chargers defensive coordinator because of the Harbaugh connection. Brandon Jordan, the newest name for sure. You guys honestly might know him. Kind of like, you know, Coach Ed, if you know who the, that, the, that person is. As someone who's worked with the pros, but in his own program. Brandon Jordan works with these guys in the offseason, or at least did. I don't know if he still does. But he's worked with everyone. And Mosu, Clowney, Crosby, Hayward, Jones, Miller, Reddick, Watt, like... You name it. Brandon Jordan's worked with these guys. He was a pass rush specialist for Michigan State. Then Seattle hired him a year later to be their pass rush specialist. And you see guys, well, obviously like in Wosu, but then Boye Mafe having a really good season as someone who was very raw coming out of college. I believe it was Minnesota uh, and developing into a very good rusher is fantastic. And then Terrell Williams, if you've watched our show for any amount of time, you know who he is. We've talked about him at length. Um, the assistant head coach for the Tennessee Titans. He was given the opportunity to be the head coach for a day against the Chicago Bears in the preseason. That's pretty cool. This is definitely your Rabel connection. He's also worked with Khalil Mack in Oakland when Oakland drafted him in the first round. So he was there for at least one of those years, if not two, with Oakland. And that, Titan, that Titans defense in front is nasty. If the Titans defense is anything, it's nasty along the defensive line. I'd argue as much so as the 49ers with arguably less talent, if not actually less talent. So it's a very, very good front. Always is. I hate it when the Chargers would play them. Um, I'm a lot because of, because of Terrell Williams. All right. Linebackers and secondary. We have Joe Witt Jr. All right. So <laughs> one that maybe didn't age well was Joe Witt Jr. And the, the DBs and the pass game coordinator for the Cowboys. That secondary uh, up until that game against the Packers generally was playing elite and you've got veteran play from Gilmore you've got young development from Bland you know as a day three player a lot of development there a lot of strong play there it just didn't work against the Packers but that doesn't mean that him and Al Harris who I believe is specifically the corner coach um, doesn't mean those guys shouldn't get interest because they've been great all season long the Packers just whooped them uh, other side is Chris Hewitt who again also could be in contention for the Chargers job because of the Harbaugh connection He's the Baltimore Ravens DB's coach and pass game coordinator. You've got Geno Stone with a whopping seven interceptions this year. But you've also got Kyle Hamilton developing into a true star. You want to see what it's like when the chess piece is used and it hits and, and the decisions are correct and they're used properly. And the first rounder is, is molded and groomed into being the all-star that they should be. That's Kyle Hamilton. That's with Chris Hewitt and this defense. Granted, that's also Mike McDonald, but still. Uh, last but not least for the defense here is Brendan Daly or Daly. I believe it's Daly uh, for Kansas City. He coaches the linebackers. He did used to work with the defensive line. So like Chris Jones, Frank Clark, those guys. But I, I was interested in him specifically. One, just to pick something different. And two, because as much as I hate the Chiefs, I got to respect their linebacker group and the development that they've had with Bolton, with Willie Gay, with Leo. Sh I think it's, it's not Chanel anymore. It's something else. I can't remember exactly how to say it now. Uh, then, of course, Drew Tranquil. Like, he fits exactly, the linebackers fit exactly what is needed for SPAC defense, whether it's it's rushing or mostly rushing or playing the run, playing aggressive. 
he's got those guys dialed in, unfortunately, as we've seen many times against the Chiefs. All right. Last but not least, I did want to shout out a couple of Chargers names on here as internal options. None of them in on, on the offense. I don't know. I don't really feel comfortable, you know, pitching and projecting any of the guys on offense to be a coordinator option. And frankly, if it's anyone from the Chargers, it is Kellen Moore, who's already a coordinator. It's not much there. Um, but Giff Smith, John Timu, and Derek Ansley, those are the three names I keep an eye on. Giff Smith, of course, as the interim head coach, has not been a defensive coordinator, but the Chargers clearly respect him and have worked with him for, for many years. He may see a fourth head coach if he stays, uh, but he's a leader. He's trusted. Khalil, Joey, all these guys. I don't know if Khalil and Joey will be on the team, but they certainly trust him. He is a leader. They picked him for a reason, so keep an eye on him. John Timu is definitely the youngest of the bunch, but he's been a rising star. Started as a graduate assistant at Washington for two years. Then he joined the Chargers on the coaching fellowship. Then he became a defensive assistant. And this past year, he was the assistant defensive line coach. When they let Jay Rogers go, John Timu was promoted again to defensive line coach. So it's a quick ascension for sure. And I don't know if that means that he's you know totally ready to call plays by any means, but he has got to keep an eye on in terms of the Chargers. And then finally, you know, the actual defensive coordinator for the Chargers right now, who is Derek Gansley. I only included him because he was not the you know, play caller defensive coordinator for most of the season. But once he was, the Chargers improved. And actually, I should have talked about this more previously, but the Chargers ended up 16th in EPA per play when he took over. Sure, part of that's playing the Chiefs. That definitely does help. But hey, or I should say the Chiefs without their starters helps. But hey, I'll take it. And it's a bit of a surprise, but or not a surprise, but it's a, it's a bit of an eye opener when you look at. Let's see if I can pull this up for you guys to see it more fully. So I'm not in it. If you look at the difference in coaching, so we have here on the left 2021 to 2023 and the Chargers defense and where it was over the three years with Brandon Staley, well, 2.875 years, whatever as Staley's head coach, and then just the three weeks where, where Derek Ansley was the defensive coordinator calling plays. Look where the defense was here as I think it, I think it was 26th or 27th overall in those three years with, with Brandon Staley as defensive coordinator, which, and this does include the Derek Ansley three games, but still, that should help it, <laughs> but it was this bad regardless. You look at the Derek Ansley games, and yes, it was only three, where the Chargers were 16th in EPA per play with Derek Ansley. Just, just the same players. Everything's the same. But Derek Ansley takes over, and Giff Smith is obviously the, the interim head coach. And the Chargers actually move up into 16th to the point where they were really close to being in the upper right quadrants next to the Cowboys and getting towards the Chiefs and the Texans. That's how good they were over the last three weeks. Again, 16th isn't great. Obviously, but to be able to do that in just a short amount of time, I do think is impressive and should be considered. All righty, that is it from me in terms of the Chargers potential coordinator candidates. If I forgot someone, let me know. I didn't have enough space for everyone. I did everything in those bunches of three. So if there's someone I left off, let me know. But I'm excited. They're interviewing Chargers. Nope, nope. Well, Chargers. Yeah, former Chargers quarterback, Jim Harbaugh. But they're interviewing Jim Harbaugh today. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, take care. And as always, Bolt up.